I will start by looking for the other uh, uh, the functions that we've written throughout the semester. We started the function. I told you what functions are. So we kind of know about it. And we kind of know about it. And uh, uh, I just want to bring the functions, uh, the functions we have written in a, in, a, in a file. So I'll find the file and then add it to this one. So that's what you do when you create it functions and you put it in a separate file so you can use it later on for other stuff. Um, this is what you do. You find the functions first, of course. So the functions probably it's going to be in the last session if we have used it. Yeah, utilities, we put it over there, right? So I'm just going to copy that utilities, OK? So I have that. Then I will find out where the directory of this project is. I right click on the name of the project. Then I'm going to find out open folder in File Explorer. That shows where the file, uh, where it is. And I'm just going to paste it here. So therefore, the, copy is, the file is copied over here. All right? And now I can start using it. Then I'll set my cell phone to mute, as you will do, hopefully. All right. And now I will start a new file. And I want to use utilities that I have the functions for read, reading uh, um, uh, numbers we have written. We have written get rent and get double, right? So I'm just going to right click over there and say add. And I'm going to add an existing item, which is essentially the, uh, the utilities file. And if I look at the utilities file, I'll see we have a flush keyboard. We're going to talk about it thoroughly today to understand what it is. We have written the get int. We have written get limited int. We have written the get double. And we're going to use these things as we go through it. Um, so. A quick review on what functions are. So I'm just going to copy these things. Any place that I'm going to use a scanner if I need that. So I'm going to put those things over there. Int main void. Return zero. Right now I'm recording it, so you can I can I can. Uh, uh, kind of prove it that I told you so. OK. When you come back from study break, you set your foot in a class, you're going to have a quiz ok, on functions and stuff. Remember that. All right? So it's important to, uh, so I want you to, uh, it's a study break, not beer drinking week. You know what I mean? It's not, a, it's not like party break. It's, you have to, you're supposed to, in that week, you're supposed to go back and review everything you have done in all your courses and kind of catch up with what you, uh, so it's not a break week. It's a study week, OK? Please. Please. I know I'm doing this. Only three of you will do it, OK? But for the rest, 33 uh, students in class, please uh, um, do actually review your, your stuff. And everybody's going, <laughs> yes, I sure, sure I'll review. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I can see your faces. But please do it, OK? <laughs> Jokes aside, do it, please. Uh, we said that functions are essentially uh, r routines that happens within our program, OK? Uh, essentially, actually, uh, old programming languages, they used to call them subroutines, OK? So they are small pieces of tasks that we have to go through to put all the things together and make a bigger program happen. So at any moment when you are thinking, uh, um, and, um, if I don't know if this, is a, if this would be a good example or not, uh, but if you have ever seen any cookbook in your life, you will see the recipe for things that you cook usually includes First, to prepare, I don't know, rice, do this as if it's one explained over there. So the, the thing that you're cooking usually includes one whole piece prepared that was explained before. They don't want to explain it again and again. 
or if you're making a chocolate cake first, uh, you have to know how to make a sponge cake and then you add a little cocoa into it and then it becomes chocolate cake. So they don't start everything from scratch. They, they say, we've explained this here, go see what it is. Now add these to that and you're gonna have this. Everything is like that in life, okay? Everything is like that in life. When you have a goal, you always break it down into small pieces so you can actually capture the goal. Small goals are easier to achieve. It gives you encouragement. It uh, kind of boosts your uh, morale, and then you can do things. When you have a huge task in hand, you won't be able to do it. You get into your room and say, what a mess. Okay, first I'm going to clean up my closet, and then I'm going to put my clothes in order, and then I'm going to do So you break it into pieces. If you just see a big mess, you're going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to do it today, and get out. But as soon as you break it into pieces, life is beautiful, you can do things. That's what functions are in C language. You break your goals down into pieces, and then it's easier to achieve. It's easier to work, work with it. We said that functions in C language, they have a mouth, they have an entry, and they have an exit. The entry of the function is where it gets information, and the return part of the function, that's where it sends a single message back, okay? Now that single message could be just a single prim pri uh, primitive type of uh, uh, value, an integer, um, I don't know, uh, a double, a character, whatever, a true or false value, zero or one, that return type, or that one single return type could be a structure containing 55 different things, but still it's one thing. You cannot send two integers back. If you want to send two integers back, you have to package it into a structure type and send that one structure out that contains two integers inside. You cannot return two things back in a function. It's impossible. OK? From the entry of the thing, that int main void that you see, that void that you see over there is essentially tells me that main is not receiving anything from anyone but you could put over there several variables. So you can pass many things to a function. So the function can start its work based on those initial values, whatever you want. Whatever your function needs to start working with. The, less, the least amount of information you pass to a function, the better is the function, the better is the function, okay? Uh, that's called coupling. So essentially, the function that you are getting, information that you're passing to your function, you have to minimize that value, those information. Functions should be self-sustained. Self uh, it, it should be a task separated from the, the main task. It, sh it should have the least amount of information needed to do its work based on itself, so uh, it can't be a standalone thing. Uh, the more information you have passed between the function and the user of the function that is another program, another function, okay, the more you have that one, the more interdependent they become, therefore less useless, use, less useful the function will be. The more information you need to provide for the function, the function becomes less general, therefore you cannot use it everywhere, okay, and that's why they want you to Always design your function with the least amount of information passed to it. Okay? Are we okay with this? That happens in life too, usually. Have you seen those people who want to tell you something? They keep saying unrelated information. They just, they're, come on, get to the point for heaven's sake. I just want to know what I want to do. It happens to you all the time. Somebody wants to tell you a story and they keep going to things that it's not, I'm like, oh, come on, enough. Okay, that's exactly what happens in a function. When, you, when a function wants to start work, they want you just to get to the point. Start the thing with the least amount of information needed so it could be simple and easy to go through. Are we okay with this? Down to here. Well, I'm not, I didn't even talk about the, I didn't even talk about the, uh, uh, the syntax of uh, how the functions are called or anything yet. Of course, we talked about it before, but uh, Today, because we are doing a separate lecture of functions, so that's uh, 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 what I'm uh, talking about right now. 
Um, just want to give you the buzzwords. I wish that we would live in a world that your actions will actually make people judge what kind of a program you are so you can get hired properly. <laughs> Better do so you can get hired more easily. But that's not really the case. You should be able to express yourself. You may be the best programmer, but because you don't know the name of what you're doing, the buzzword of what you're doing, like it would say, uh, uh, what is the, like, um, uh, what is the rate of coupling of your functions that you're writing? And you say, what the heck? What a coupling of my functions? What the devil that means? That means how much information you're passing to your function. Uh, so, so th these are the buzzwords. The other one is cohesion, okay? Um, The more cohesive your function is, the better your function is, which means a function that only follows, only performs one task, one thing, and not more than that. You're supposed to write functions that follow one goal, and it doesn't have too much bells and whistles inside. Therefore, the function becomes a function that can be used for its purpose. And when you run it, it will not have too many side effects. Okay? If you run like, and that's when I mentioned to all my students, don't be a hero when you're doing your work. By, like I'm telling you, write a program, write a function that validates. I'm going to give you an example. Assume there is a function that I'm supposed to give an integer to it. Okay? And it's supposed to check to see if, if this is a valid age or not a valid value for human age, okay? And send me a true or false to tell me if this is a valid thing or not. I'm gonna call this function valid age, okay? So say the function name is valid age, so I'm gonna call this valid age, okay? And it's going to return me a true or false value. Now, what is a true or false value? It's an integer, right? So I'm going to say it returns an integer. And what is it going to receive? The minimum value it needs, the minimum amount of information it needs to find out if an age is a valid age for a human being. It's just one integer, right? And that is age. So I'm going to say int age, correct? Right? Yes. Why are we using the Huh? So one more time. It is a C language. What is a true value? You just answered the question in your quiz. What is a true value? What is a true value, bad boy? Thank you very much. And you know it. I know you know it. Okay. Uh, uh, if if you if you are craving to have, first of all, it says, isn't there a boolean value that we can use? It's C. You can make it if you want to. Okay. All the, like the C++ that you heard Boolean in it is essentially, they used one struct, one type of, uh, it's called the type def, and they built one. So you can build your types if you want to. But we are not at that stage. For now, we know that false is zero and anything but, but zero is true, right? So if our function needs to tell us if something true or false, we need that. And integer, right? I know. Sorry that I'm picking on that, but don't, um, how can I explain this? To learn what are the, what are the bases of a language helps you to be a more strong and better programmer later. Okay? That's why I'm insisting of not using stuff that are, uh, you know, but no, we don't have Boolean in C language. All right? So, why we are returning integer? Because we want it to be true or false. So my thing was that if I want that, so what is a valid value for human age? It should be greater than zero, OK? And less than 100. So anybody that more than 100 years old, they're not worth living, right? No. We <laughs> no. So, so we have to, no, no, no. We have to, we have to 
we have to check, go see in history and see what is the, like ask, like I gotta say, okay, there has been no cases of more than 140 years old. So we can be, okay, for our application to be 99.9% .9 correct, I need to go up to 110, right? Something like that, or 120, whatever, yes. Well, your grandma lives 140? No. <laughs> 120, oh, you just Googled it? Oh, okay, there you go, Googled it. So 122, beautiful, okay? So this, pro this function's job would be to check and see if somebody, if the number that I'm receiving is between 1 and 122, if it is, it's going to return true. If it's not, it is going to return false, correct? So that would be uh, uh, a function with high cohesion, which means it, it, that is its job. But if you print it over there, invalid age, <laughs> while doing that test, then you screwed everything up. Nobody asks you to print an error message if the age is not right. Or say, good job, good age you entered. You, you know, you shouldn't do anything that you haven't been asked for. Or you have to think, is this jo the job of this function? Does it say valid age and print error? No, it's just valid age. It's not supposed to print an error. Okay, maybe the person doesn't want to print an error, wants to do something else. So again, what I say is that don't be a hero. It means stick to the task, do what is assigned, and don't do anything extra. Okay, anything extra is actually bad. It's not a good thing. Okay, if they want something extra, they're going to ask you to do it. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? So again, uh, so that's uh, the second thing that we need to know. So number one, least amount of information passed between functions. That's a good thing. The second thing that's called what? Amount of information passing. Degree of coupling, right? All right, and your function should do a single task. One goal, to go through it and don't do any extra stuff, and that's the cohesion of the function. Are we okay? Are we okay with this? All right. So, yeah. Let, let that be for now. Now, for this utility, something that I want that, that we talked. We talked, we wrote a few functions. One was flush keyboard. That's perfect. It doesn't receive anything from anyone, doesn't return anything, just, just does its job, which is essentially guarantees that the keyboard you're dealing with is a clean keyboard. There's nothing in it. it you can start a fresh entry out of it, OK? Um, and then I have a get int that doesn't receive anything from anyone. It just receives an integer from user and returns it to me. So it doesn't ask me anything or for any reason. So that's a perfect function. Then I have get limited integer, which is essentially receiving an integer from the user. But it makes sure that it's between two things, right? And then it returns it to me. Uh oh, it actually reprints something. I need to see if that is needed or not. OK? If I don't print an error message over here, is it good? Is it not? I have to see what is the purpose of the function. So that's on the question. We're not going to talk about it now. OK, so it gets a limited integer and returns an integer. So probably, actually, that, that would be a nice thing because it's not uh, getting anything from anyone. It does its work by itself. And it's not involved too much with other functions. It just needs the information to go through. And the other one is get double that we have done. Um, get limited int uses the get int function to do its work. It's not redoing anything, which is very good. OK, get limited int doesn't get an integer from anyone, right? It just uh, uh, calls the function that does it. Therefore, it is relying on the logic of the previous function, which is very nice. It's not doing anything extra. It's not doing the get int by itself. It's not redoing the work that it's done before. That's the main purpose of the function. Always, always, always remember this thing. Reuse your code. It is the most important rule of programming. Reuse your code. If you attack the logic, if you did a logic and you fixed it and you found a solution for it and you wrote code for it, bank that code somewhere so you can use later so you don't have to think about it again. Okay? That saves you time, and time is money. money. 
All right? It's very important. Very, very, very important. Reuse your code. All right? So, and then we had get double. I didn't write any get limited double. But the logic is the same. We could do it in two seconds. Uh, we'll do it. Let me actually write it right now. So if I want to, if I want to write get double, what I need, uh, get limited double, what I need to do is exactly like the other one, but instead, because I am receiving a, a double value, I have to tell to the, to the function uh, what is the range. So I'm going to say return me a double. And I'm passing it to double values, minimum and double maximum valid value to actually get from the user. It works exactly. So anytime your function is returning something, if you see your function is returning something, for now, the rule is immediately create one and return it. That's how you start your function. I have a double being returned by my function. Immediately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create one. I'm going to say double value and return value. And then I'm going to think how I'm supposed to create that value. This is something for now. Later on, you may find other ways of doing it. But for now, that's what it is. As soon as you see you are returning something, create it and return it. And then think, how am I supposed to do that? OK? Now I'm supposed to get a double value and return it, right? I've already done that. OK? I already done getting the value, so I don't need to think about that. I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to get a value, so let's get it get double so I'm getting the double now that I got double I have to see if it's valid or not how do I know it's if, if it's not valid I'm gonna say if that value that I have got is less than minimum or the value that I got is greater than the maximum value it means I made some uh, some mistake right are we okay with this now I'm going to print a message, say, hey, you did wrong. Again, printf, oh, 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 what did I do? OK. So I'm going to say printf out of range, retry. Out of range, Arr. OK. Retry, and I'm going to mention percent %lf. Not to be too dramatic, I'm going to put 0.3. I don't know what the definition, what is the, 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 the thing. See, there are too many things that I have to think about. What is the precision that I have to put over here to show the user what the value that we're supposed to? I don't know how to do it yet. I, I cannot make it a variable yet. So for now, I'm going to put 0.3. Later on, I'm going to learn you can actually pass that to the function too. So you want to see the function uh, give you a specific precision, you can actually do that. But for now, let's ha have it like this. So percent uh, 3 LF, 0.3 LF, only three digits after the decimal point. And I'm going to put over here, should be less than or equal. I'm going to say value. And uh, that should be less than or equal percent 0.3 LF. And I'm going to put the minimum and maximum. And I'm going to put a thing and minimum and max. And then I have to make sure the keyboard is fresh and clean and out with everything that I want. Do I need to do that? Do I need to clean up the keyboard? No, I don't. Get int does it. Get double does it. OK, get, get double never leaves any garbage behind. So I don't need to worry about that. That's a good thing. So in here, I'm just going to have to get it again. So I'm going to say value is set to get double again. And it goes back up, checks it, and every, everything's OK. It returns the value, and the function is done. OK, so now I have get double, limited double. OK, that does the exact same thing as the get limited integer. OK, now another thing that I wanted to teach you, if I want to use these things in a program, if I want to use these functions in a program, I have to have their prototypes added, right, so I can use them. Correct? I have to add the prototypes added so I can use them. That could be a problem. Why? Because as you go through it, for example, we wrote it utilities. That's a bad name. Let me fix that. I named it better in the other class. I'm going to put it this one. I put it my I.O. because it's all about input and about output, right? There are no utilities over here. I'm not. So I'm going to put it my I.O. My I.O. 
Okay, so my input output stuff. Okay, that's a better name for it. It kind of tells what the thing is for. Okay, so yeah, so later on you're gonna keep adding stuff. You're gonna get strings. What is a string? What is a string? Someone. Ah. Bad boy, you just you just lost the interview. You're you're not hired. Gone. Okay, okay. What is a string? Okay, pass the interview. What is it? Anybody? Doesn't exist. <laughs> That's philosophical. <laughs> what is a string? A string doesn't exist. <laughs> it's just your imagination. Yeah. That means I want to get hired badly, but I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> well, it's a very special gap. Is that correct? It means you remember something, but you don't know exactly what it is, which is good. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's better than that. It's better than him. Go, oh, who, who, who? It means you know how to do it, but you don't know the buzzword for it. So no one knows. So what is a string? I want the interview answer. This is going to be in your test tomorrow, an interview question. Okay, and you have to say it right. So what is the definition of a string in C language? No, 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 no. OK, I actually mentioned this in class, and I said you should remember this. Now I'm going to say, write this down on top of your bed, put it over on a seat, so we wake up in the morning, you see it. OK, a string is a null terminated array of characters. <laughs> null terminated. Array of characters, right? Some good properties, yes. And then, you know, it ends with something. Well, and then slash 0, it means it didn't know it's actually null. It knows it's slash 0 is 0. But null is the name, it's the buzzword, right? Remember, null terminated or whatever. So my point was later, later, yeah, teamwork, yeah, team. So they should hire all of you at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So, so what happens is that now what I was saying is that tomorrow you want to write an, a, a, a function that actually gets a string, like please enter your name, get somebody's name. And you want to do IO like that, more like that. So you want to add to this. And you're going to end up with 200 functions in there. How do you know what was the like, what? Like, how do you remember which functions were what? Did you have to go keep writing it at the top of the program? Oops, I want to use this. Let me go to the top and add that one, add this prototype, add that prototype. You don't need to do that, OK? What you can do, you can create a file, what we call a header file, and put all the prototypes in there. And then you can add them anywhere you want. So if you want the I.O. routines that you have, you're just going to bring them in. How you're doing it, you go to the header files, and you add a new item. What is the name of the header file? Always the exact same name of your code. But you put a .h after. So this becomes myio.h. OK? And in myio.h, what do you put? You put the prototype of all the functions you had. So what you do, that's that one. Only the prototypes. A header file is not allowed to contain any code. Any code. All prototypes go in there. Did I use any scanf in here? Did I use any printf in here? No, I don't need these things over here. That's that. Safe. Now if I want to use this thing in my program, all I need to do is to say include, did I type? No, no. Hashtag include. This header file is a custom header file. It's not a library header file. Because it's a custom header file, you have to tell to the compiler where it is. How you do that, that's double code. Whenever you don't mention, and actually it tells you, it tells you that there is one over here. You see that? There you go. So, so by doing that, you're saying in this directory, that header file. If the directory was in other header file, other directories, you can actually put the path over there. Don't. For now, your header files are always right beside your code. And they are all in the same file. So please, if you get something from your old stuff, don't dump it in another directory and then try to include it from there. And then don't do that. Everything must be in your project directory. So if I do that, if I include my I.O. over here, <coughs> I could simply say, 
um, printf, please enter the price, the price, and now I can simply have double price saying price is set to get limited double between 1.0 and $3,000, let's say. Okay? And it will, I don't need to put any type of uh, prototypes up there. Why? Because include literally, and I want you to listen to this carefully before you leave. Literally, it means copy that file and paste it where I see the include. Literally. So compiler simply brings that file, like a fast typist, types it over here. Have a good day. All right? <laughs> All right? So that's what it is. Yes? So does this mean that when we are submitting our lab or our lab, our workshops, mm -hmm. we would have to... Have you can't do this. If you're, if in your... Beautiful question. Listen to me. He says that I'm using functions now with my workshops. Can I do that include thingy with my workshop? Sadly, no, because my submitter looks for specific types to submit. And because my io.c is not in the list of deliverables, it's not going to pick it up. So in your case, if I'm not telling you to use functions and I don't give you what the file name is, you have to sadly copy and paste the code under the thing and do all the stuff so you can't have header files. For now, you have to do everything manually. But in a good world, when everything is done properly, and I'm going to, soon we're going to get there after functions, we're going to ask you to do this actually, okay? So to, to give multiple files. And that's how it's going to happen, okay? So, um, yeah. So now, uh, this my io.h, whatever is in it, simply gets pasted. So what compiler does before compilation, first it goes to the library of C, copies and pastes all the code lines of standard input output, pastes it over there, and removes that include. Then it comes over here, goes to my io, copies the whole thing, goes back over here, not there, goes back over here, and simply pastes it over there. And then it starts compiling. Now, I did not use a get double. I did not use get int. I did not use flush keyboard over here. But, they are in, but the prototypes are there anyway. It's not going to hurt. OK? That's why it doesn't matter if it's there. I didn't write the code. I didn't add anything to the code. I just introduced that there are functions if you want to use. All right? So essentially, this means this. Are you OK with that? Including a file means pasting the file over there, which brings us to the next problem. Sometimes these includes happen in a hidden way that you don't know. Like, for example, you created a function called accounting IO, which essentially does accounting input and output. It does whatever values in accounting you need to get, okay? Like, enter dividends, okay? Something like that. OK, or uh, account balance entry, things like that, right? In your, I want your information. In your, in your accounting program, you have a header file. In that header file, you added my io.h, correct? OK? So when you actually add that header file over here, so when you are saying include accounting io.h to here without knowing indirectly you are including your my io you are not aware of it because that is included in the other header file so one header file used another header file okay now not being aware of it you include your own well you include well not that one you include your own my io.header file so you are going to end up with these prototypes added twice to your file, which causes big, big trouble. It gives you compilers. It's going to tell you, you already have that prototype. Why you are giving me the second time? Compiler is not aware of it. It's not an intelligent thing to do. Compiler simply blindly copies and pastes. For that reason, 
We play a trick that is too rich for your blood. Therefore, I'll tell you how to do it. You blindly follow it. Something that prevents your header files to get included twice. OK? So what do we do? Any header file, any header file that you create, you create, you write one thing at a time. You say, if not defined, if NDEF. What you put in front of it? You put the name of the header file, OK? You put the name of the header file with, uh, say, your name's initials or your company initials, whatever you have. Let's say we are in uh, IPC 144, OK? So I'm going to call this, I'm going to say IPC. So that's the regulation for header file in my classes. You put IPC 144. That's you do it through that. Then you put underline. Then you put my IO dot underline H. And then two underlines after. Why? Because the sky is high. I just came up with that regulation. That's in our uh, coding style in a company. So in your company, when you receive, you are doing a C++, C, C or C++ program, they tell you safeguard for header files format are like this. First, you write IPC 144, underline, name of the file, underline dot H, and two underlines after. Why? That's our regulation. So for every header file, you're going to have a unique ID automatically created by you. Then on a second line, what you do, you repeat that line. But instead of if not define, you put over here define. And right at the end, you say and if. OK? So what happens over here is this. You are telling to the compiler, if this phrase is not defined, start compiling. Compiler starts compiling. The very first thing that happens is what? It defines that phrase, right? To whatever, garbage, to nothing. We don't care. As the important thing is that it is defined now. And then it compiles the rest of the things, right? Now, the second time, without knowing, you included the file again, right? The compiler says, if it's not defined, but it's already defined, right? Because the compile, it compiles, so it's not going to compile the rest anymore. So this is actually, we call it preprocessor directives. These are lang this is not C. This is the language of C compiler. You are telling the compiler how to compile. You've already done that with defined statements. In defined statements, you just search and replace, right? For now, you don't need to understand this. I mentioned it as the best I could for our lever, but you don't need to know it. All you need to know, any header file you create immediately without writing a code in it. You write if, if MDF, DEF, if not defined, you write that thing at the top, and then define, you write that one, and MDF at the end. OK? Now, I came up with this right now. We have to find out what the regulation is. Maybe we write SICT because we are in School of Information and Computer te Technology. Maybe instead of IPC 144, I'm going to ask you, write SICT at the beginning. SICT, something like that. But whatever it is, but whatever it is, we're going to tell you what it is. OK? So this is dictated to you by your boss. The logic is universal. OK? It always involves the name of the header file, though. That's one important fact. As a matter of fact, if you actually go and take a look at your compiler, which one is it? Visual Studio, so it's not in this one. Visual Studio. Visual C, include, whatever, standard arg, OK? Ah, over here, it's actually using Pragmavon, son of a gun. That's another thing that you do it. Uh, let me just find something here. Anyways, in the, yeah, I wanted to show you the, the actual header files. If you find standard input output, you're going to see at the beginning, it does the same thing. 
but it can be done in two different ways. But mm, anyways, this is the universal one that works for everything. So remember that. Anyways, I should remember to remove that from the recording. Anyways, uh, any questions down to here? OK, so that's the header files well, that we know now. Now, so we can actually have from now on, any place you want, I want to use the myio.c routines functions, I have to bring those two files here and include the header file over there and the source files over here. As a matter of fact, if you just, I'm just going to remove this and this one. So I'm going to remove them, but not delete. I'm going to say remove. I think we remove yada yada. Okay, so they're removed, right? Now I'm going to go right click on the, uh, I'm going to go right click on the project name and I'm going to say add existing items and I'm going to use the two files and I'm going to click add. Automatically it's going to add it to the proper place. Why didn't it? Oh. Did I remove the header files completely? Okay, my bad. Hmm. I removed the directory by mistake, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, my bad. Okay, if I had the include that I did not have, that I, uh, uh, so uh, include files. What was the name, include files? Okay, let me pause it and fix it. What I was saying is that when you want to bring already existing functions and header files and files into your project, you don't need to one by one bring them into header files and the source files. All you need to do is to right click on the project and click add existing items and select the items that you want to add and click on add and automatically it's going to put them in a proper place. So header files go under header files and source files go under source files. Okay? By mistake last time I deleted the whole thing. Another thing that I have to mention over here to you and I'm sad that our, my friends are not here, probably they went to grab a bite or something, is that these things that you see over here, they don't mean anything. They don't actually exist in the file, in the file structure. It's just for organizing the graphical user interface. When I actually go to the folder, you see everything is side by side. None of it is tagged as header file or anything like that. As a matter of fact, when you are compiling a multi-file let me just remove that. We don't need that. When you are, in, when you are compiling a multi-file uh, uh, project with C compiler, all you need to do is to go, is to type GCC and then the name of the files. So on, on C compiler, what you write, you write gccprg.c my io dot c and then dash o whatever the project name is okay and you hit enter now now when you compile your code like that on a linux box or on a command line compiler you put the name of the compiler name of the files you don't mention the header files why because they're already mentioned in the file Compiler already know it has to bring those files in. Therefore, they are, they, you don't need to mention them in the, in the compile line at all. Just the name of the files will do. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. Uh, so this is as far as we're going to go with the functions. You already know how the functions are written. You already know uh, how to pass information to functions. You already know how to return stuff from functions. Uh, we, I think, actually uh, returned some structures when we were doing parallel programming, did we? Parallel, uh, not parallel programming, that's three semesters from now. Uh, when we were doing parallel arrays, right? And converted it to a structure, and I showed you how structures work with functions a little bit. We're going to talk about that after the break. That's the lecture after the break, not now. So we, uh, any questions down to this point about functions? Okay, we are good to go about functions. That's what it is. Now the next topic that I'm going to talk about is something that uh, is kind of, it's something that people get scared of it for some reason in C language, and I have no idea why. Um, we'll come up with that in two seconds. Okay? Let me save this.
when we talk about variables, what variables really are? When we are talking about variables, what do we, what do we mean? When I, say, when I say over here, integer i, OK? When I say integer i, and then I say, I don't know, um, i is set to 10, and I'm going to say printf percent d, and I put over here i. What is that i? When I say integer i at that line 7, what happens is that I'm asking the compiler to ask the operating system to dedicate or reserve a piece of memory to the size of an integer, which is 4 bytes, and tag it as i and give it to me so I can use it for my program. So essentially, and then when I say over here 1, 2, 3, then that's actually what it's going to go in it, which means 